Boing. Let's take a look at exporting animations. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1. Your screens may look a little different. So you've created your cinematic masterpiece. The next step is to export it so that you can share it with the world. Exporting an animation is easy. Tap on the button at the top right of the animation screen, as shown, to open the output menu, and then select Export Animation. Animation Pro will display an export popover. Here you can select from a number of different export options. I'll now explain each of them from the top down. First, you can select from a number of different output resolutions. If you don't want the video to consume much storage space, perhaps, for example, you want to send the video via email, then it may be best to choose a low resolution. The top resolution, on the other hand, would be more appropriate for watching your animation on a television. This resolution is often referred to as Full HD and is commonly used on Blu-ray discs. Please note, the last two resolutions will not be available if you're not using a Retina iPad. This is one of the many reasons we recommend that Animation Pro is only run on iPad 3s and above and iPad Mini 2s and above. Moving down, the next section contains a number of controls for exporting 3D animations. By default, Animation Pro will produce two-dimensional videos. You can, however, choose to export a video in either anaglyph or side-by-side -side 3D video formats. When any of the 3D formats are selected, the Z order of each figure will be used to calculate its relative position in 3D space. Let's take a quick look at what that means. The background images in your frames will have a Z order of 0 and will appear to be behind the screen you're viewing the video on. By default, figures will have a Z order of 0 0.5 and will appear to be sitting on the screen. Figures, however, can be assigned a Z order anywhere between 0 and 1. With a Z order of 1, the figures will appear to be floating out in front of the screen. Now just how far something appears behind or in front of the screen is controlled by the depth dial. With the depth set to its minimum value, a 3D video will look the same as a 2D video. At its maximum value, the 3D effect will be much more pronounced. Now you may need to experiment with the settings to suit the way in which the video will be viewed. You'll probably go cross-eyed, for example, if you try to view an anaglyph video at full depth. Oh, and before I move on, anaglyph glasses can vary. Some are red and blue, others are blue and red. So choose the button based on the type of glasses that you have. The picture on each button shows the colour of the lenses as viewed on somebody's face. Next, we have the frame rate and tween settings. Generally, you'll animate at, say, 10 frames per second, and then have Animation Pro automatically calculate, say, two intermediate frames, these are also known as tweens, between each of those frames to produce a video running at 30 frames per second. In general, the more tweens that you add, the smoother your exported videos will be. Of course, that can potentially result in very large video files with frame rates too high for some older devices. So choose carefully. And please note, if you've added user tweens into your animation, then the number of tweens will be fixed and thus unavailable for selection here. In the next section, you can select the range of frames that you'd like to export. By default, Animation Pro will export the entire animation. But sometimes, especially if you're working on an extremely long animation, it can be useful to export a small section, just to see how things are going. Unlike the quick preview on the animation screen, this will also allow you to properly preview lip syncing, user tweens and various audio effects. The final section allows you to select the output format. You can choose to export the animation as a video, a sequence of images, or a sequence of images with transparency. OK, there's a few things I should explain here. 1. Videos are exported to a file that resides within the given project. When the export is finished, it will play automatically. On the top of that screen is a button that will allow you to share the video with other apps, save it to the camera roll, 
or airdrop it somewhere else. Please note that, once a video has been exported, it can also be played back from the animation screen, or the project selection screen. 2. Exported images will be written directly to the photo library. 3. The images with transparency option is useful for exporting animated figures with an alpha channel. This is something that game developers, for example, may find useful. Now, once you've selected all of the desired settings, press the green tick button to start the export process. Depending upon the complexity and the length of your animation, this may take quite some time. And 3D animations will take nearly three times longer to render, as Animation Pro needs to produce, for every frame in between, an image for the left eye, an image for the right, and then combine them both together. So patience will be a virtue if you've animated an entire army with shadows, reflections, and applied depth of field. Actually, if you're animating all of that, then a power supply might also be a virtue. Finally, you can stop an export at any time by pressing the small red X button at the top left corner of the export popover. Switching to another app will also stop the export, as this process is something Animation Pro really can't do in the background. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.